Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And thank you so much for joining us today for our welcome back session of Classroom 2 Live. We've enjoyed our break. I hope that you have too. And we're eager to start the new school year up and to welcome our special guest today, Tim Sullivan, <clears throat> who is going to tell us all about a new tool that will be great for helping teachers who need to ask parents or encourage parents to get supplies for their classroom or for their students. So welcome to um, <clears throat> Tim. And I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then I'm going to move on and ask him our newbie question and let him take over from there. Tim is an awesome person for us to know, and he's had a very, very busy life. He founded School Family Media back in 1999 and has an incredible career with parenting and as a part of the PTO Today magazine. So that is a wonderful resource. If you haven't discovered that yet, you should take a look at that. He's definitely recognized nationally as a leader in all aspects of parent involvement in education, which is a topic that's very near and dear to our hearts here on Classroom 2 Live, because we really believe parent involvement, parent engagement is so important. Prior to founding School Family Media, Tim was a high school teacher in New York City and a national sales director for a school fundraising firm. He graduated from Notre Dame University, and he lives with his wife and his four children in Attleboro, Massachusetts, and is obviously actively involved in his children's schools and the many civic and youth sports organizations they have there. So with that introduction, I'm going to go on and ask Tim to talk to us about our newbie question. Tim, why do you think it's important for teachers to use technology tools to facilitate communication with parents? And take it away. I will try, Peggy. Thanks for having me today. It's really, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the discussion today. Uh, the, the question is such a basic, I think, as a former teacher, this one is near, near and dear to my heart. Um, I think it's a two-part answer. The first is parent engagement is not just a like-to-have. Um, research says for effective schools it's a must-have. So the, the idea, the concept of parent, excuse me, schools and teachers communicating with parents, it's got to be core to our schools for the schools to be successful. And when you combine that with 2015, what's happening with communication, and, and it's funny, I was doing some research for a, a talk I'm giving in, in September. Um, I talk about millennial, millennial moms, millennial parents. Um, it seems like such a new uh, concept, but the millennial moms are now school moms. If you look at the data, they're, they're parents of first graders and second graders and third graders, even fourth and fifth graders at times for the youngest, for the oldest of them. Um, and millennial moms, are communicating with technology, whether it's Facebook or texting, uh, apps. That is the way of communication. So if we think parent involvement is important, then we think communication is important. And we have to communicate in the way that our parents can receive, and that's using technology. So it's, a, it's, a, it's really a must-have now in 2015. And then, I, so I was waiting. I'm sorry. I was waiting for. A, I'll keep the presentation going. That's that's my take on why this is so important, which dovetails really well to our presentation today, which is about teacher lists. And and I like to think, especially with this audience of of teachers and administrators and school tech specialists, there's so many things going on in the school, so many important things, whether it's curriculum planning or you know whole school tech, technology implementations. We're not tackling those things. We're tackling one simple thing. And that is every year for the past 50, schools have asked parents to make sure their kids come to school supplied properly. And they've been doing that in really old ways. We're helping fix that. It's been inefficient. It's been slow. It's been frustrating for parents. TeacherList aims to change that. Um, so we have, we're taking this one little piece of the school 
uh, process where you communicate with parents in trying to make it a lot better for schools and for parents. Moving forward, this is what I hope, hopefully, especially those folks of you in the states, um, this process has been stuck in old times for a long, long time. Um, I like to say that the, the biggest technology revolution for school supply lists in the last 20 years has been the Word document, which isn't exactly high tech. Um, you see the, the, the picture here on the left side with the a store manager putting photocopied lists in bins in stores. That's been about the most fancy part of this process for decades. And it just seems like in 2015 it should be much, much easier. Uh, parents are frustrated. They go to find the lists and they, they're not ready, they're, they're on the school website. I even, uh, that picture on the left side, of, on the right side of this page, um, more than 75% of moms have a smartphone today. And yet if they're in the store aisles at Target or Staples, trying to use their school supply list on a smartphone, they can't read it because it's a Word doc or a PDF that they have to scroll and they need, they need their you know, micro, uh, magnifying glass to read their school supply list. With teacher lists, we're changing that. Um, really simple, efficient, faster, smarter. And it works a lot like this. You just try and, try and think of this from a simple process standpoint. Schools, often school secretaries, sometimes school tech specialists, have these lists. The teachers provide them. These are the lists of the required school supply items that kids have to have on the first day of school. Um, that school secretary, that teacher, that school tech specialist, just loads the list into our system one time. It can be, you know, attach the Word document here, press send. We then put the list into our system. We call it digitizing the list. And once the list is digitized, it becomes really flexible and usable and much more user friendly in all kinds of outputs. And I'll show you that in a second. But you put the list into teach list, we digitize it for the school, and from there, everything gets much simpler. Right, here's a, we provide a link for your school website. So instead of you having to post a Word doc or a PDF on your school website that's really hard for parents to use, you just put a link on your school website to the list on teacher lists. Every parent then knows that all the lists are on teacherlist.com. They can look it up on their smartphone. They can look it up in their, right when they're shopping. And it's all much simpler. It's even kind of cool. Because the lists are digitized, they can travel. So if you put a list on TeachList today, it also appears immediately on Amazon.com. And we envision that happening immediately with more retailers in the future. It's also available immediately right now on FamilyDollar.com. Um, those are just two of we, what we see as really a ubiquitous presence of these lists. I, I saw someone make a note earlier, meeting parents where they are. And that's what happens here. We want to make these lists available wherever parents want them, in, a, in their favorite store, online, on their smartphone, on the school website. If the lists live in one digitized place, they can then be shared broadly, and it's always very usable. It's here I want to take you. I'm going to hopefully use my uh, Blackboard Collaborate system well. But here's where I want to take you to uh, a couple of live links. And I think I have that going. Um, so online here, this is an example of the Westlake. This is a live site right now. We're, we're live online. This is the Westlake Elementary School website. In all of their parents, it's August 1st. This is exactly when parents are looking for school supply lists. And the Westlake School has those links. If we click on this link right here, it's Mr. Kavanaugh's school supply list. That link takes you right to teacherlist.com. The list is extremely easy to read. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of that pop-up. The list is extremely easy to read. It works on a mobile phone. It's responsively designed. So if, if we were looking at this on a small screen, it would still appear very easy to read. Um, parents can find exactly what the, what's required for the class that year. Teachers can put in their own notes like they always do. Uh, they can put in requests. They can put a welcome message, whatever they want but it appear, it's a very user-friendly system for parents and for teachers. You may have seen that pop-up. We also have coupons for parents that appear here in that link directly to Amazon and hopefully more retailers in the future uh, if parents want to find that list. 
it's kind of cool if we click this Amazon link. It doesn't take you just to Amazon.com. It takes you to the exact list you were just on, the list you were looking for, preloaded on Amazon. So over here on the left-hand side of the page is the Westlake Middle School 7th grade list right on Amazon, including all the notes the teacher had included on our site. Everything the teacher included is appearing here on Amazon in real time. So again, we're, we're, and this is just step one, we're looking to make this process really simple and efficient for parents. Um, they don't have a lot of time. Schools don't either. We're trying to get in and out of this quickly. And I'll just show you one other link live. Um, I guess that's it. Those are the three links I wanted to show you. Uh, a list on a school site, that same list on teacher lists, and then that list appearing live on Amazon. It's really neat stuff. Um, I'm go back to Blackboard, so bear with me with my, um, my Blackboard expertise. I think I did it. Um, so we're back to the presentation. You saw that we took, we, we go from, for the school technology staff, it really, it's really taking a, what shouldn't be a burden, off their hands. Um, you know, getting those lists up, redesigning the website every year, finding the lists, reloading them. One other cool step is that once the lists are in our system, next year it's just a matter of hitting refresh. You can edit parents, excuse me, teachers, school volunteers, school tech coordinators, school secretaries, can edit lists, can change the year from 15 to 16. Um, and everything still remains live in the same way for, for parents and your families. Um, again, I mentioned, I think this is perhaps one of the most beneficial advance, advances that we have for schools. Um, if your site or your Word docs are not responsive, it really frustrates parents. Our site is completely responsive. So your lists that may be in Word doc, maybe a Word doc, when you give them to us, we digitize them and then they're immediately um, responsive. So your parents on the smartphone, like I said, it's 75% plus of parents on smartphones are accessing these lists in a responsive manner. All right, we, did, we did some of these links already, so I'm going to jump through this one. You may have noticed, and I just want to make sure everyone's clear, what, some people ask us, you know, what's the catch? What's the business model? And I'll tell you, um, it, it's, we will always be free for schools and for parents. Um, there are a lot of folks in business who are interested in these lists. You may not be surprised. So, you know, when Target puts those bins up in their stores, it's because they want to make, they want to help their shoppers shop because Target does well when shoppers shop. shop. Same is true for Amazon and Staples and, and Target and Walmart, uh, Family Dollar. But you also may notice some brands on here, folks like, um, you know, Sharpie pens or Mead notebooks or hefty uh, resealable bags. They've always wanted to incent teachers in schools to make, you know, just to say, hey, um, if you're going to ask for permanent markers, ask for Sharpie because they're the best quality or they're the best value. We never require schools to put brands on lists, but you might see that there might be a pop-up that says, hey, do you, you want to make that a Sharpie permanent marker? Teachers can say no. Teachers can put a different brand on the list if they so desire, if that's their favorite. We never uh, edit school lists. But Sharpie and Hefty and Expo and Bic, those guys are involved because they, they, love, the, they love the ability to um, speak to parents in schools about these lists. And they'll even put coupons on the site so parents can save some money. But that's how we are in business here. Um, we give schools and teachers a free tool and parents a free tool. And these brands um, get some benefit as well. Right, we, we talked about the coupons. That's, you know, the, Another place where schools really can't, can't get involved, one school can't go out and speak to these brands and get the coupon offers and set up a coupon site on their school website. Through teacher lists, um, the parents get to benefit from this, and we do all that work, and it's automatic for the school. Okay. And the cool thing is, and it's, we're right in the weeds right now, it's August 1st, um, it's amazing to watch this grow. This summer, um, by August 15th or so, we'll be at 850,000 lists in 2015. Um, we'll have lists from more than 36,000 schools. And as you may know, there's about 85,000 K-8s, to there's about 110,000 K-12s to in America. Um, and where it's been just growing like crazy this summer, the more folks see the common sense of this, the more they just jump on. And a lot of the folks, the school tech people, 
um, the school administration, like the school secretaries, when they realize there's a way to make this easier for them when they're so busy, they love it and they're telling their friends. So if, if, if you see it and you have some friends you can tell about it too, that's, uh, that's what makes this thing work. So the, and just to summarize, this is really it. Um, provide us your list in any format. We'll digitize them for you and send you, a, send you a note when they're ready, which is usually about 24 hours. Add a link to your school website and you're done. Um, your school supply process is then simple forever because the next year it's just, it's just a matter of renewing the list and, and updating the year. And if my final note, um, get your list in before August 31st this year and your school can be entered to our $5,000 uh, Schools Work Smarter Sweepstakes. Um, so that's, that's for every school that gets, I think it's five or more lists um, and a link by August 31st and you're eligible for a $5,000 sweepstakes for your school. Uh, and we like to think that, that school, Schools Work Smarter tag is how we like to think about this process. We're just trying to create a, a smarter solution for a process that virtually every school uh, in the whole country takes part in. So that's it. Peggy, I think you may still be here, but uh, that's our presentation. I'd love to talk about this stuff and any really other ways that schools can work smarter as well. Oh, I, sorry, Peggy, I did, I did have another slide here. The, the one other neat part of this, it's not as developed as a school supply list, but if you think about this platform as a school communication platform, Teacher wish lists are also very popular as school gets in place. That's when the teachers who are spending $500 of their own money every year ask for help from parents. So the school supply list is the required items for the kids. The teacher wish list is when a teacher says, hey parents, would you mind helping me with this? And often it's hand sanitizer or tissues. Uh, it could even be a, a new carpet for the reading corner or some books for our, school li our classroom library. Our teacher wish, wish list functionality completely supports that and we even have a pledge functionality so parents say yeah I'll send that in I'll pledge uh, four boxes of tissues for the classroom and that way the teacher knows what's coming in. We also like to think about um, our platform as supporting summer reading lists. Again same technology teachers say here are the books we'd love the kids to read next summer and they'll be in digital format responsive and we'll even link those to retailers as well to make life easy for parents. And I want to thank everybody for the time this morning. And like I said a minute ago, love to talk about this stuff and other ways we can make uh, school communication and parent communication way more effective for parents. Thanks so much, Tim. I did capture a question in the chat. If you do want to ask Tim something, please go ahead and type in the chat and I'll ask your questions and the questions the question was do the coupons that show up vary based on each particular list or is it based on the item not yet they're not so I don't, I'd almost call it like smart couponing mm -hmm. no um, and that, that's a great idea and some, probably some technology challenges there right. but uh, right now the coupons are the same so what if you may get a um, you know an Elmer's glue coupon even if there is not Elmer's glue on your list. Okay. Any other questions for Tim? And I do see some typing, so. <laughs> no, I was talking so much I wasn't reading the chat, so I'm, I'm looking back <laughs> That's in now okay. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, the Amazon Smile Note is, is really interesting, right? And there's a couple other programs like that too where online purchases uh, benefit your school. And that's a great add-on here. We don't, we're not connected to Smile directly, but you, if you were shopping on Amazon with our list and you're a Smile customer, your school would get that credit. That's pretty cool. Peggy would like to hear more about your PTO today uh, and sure. some of your other parent involvement work. Yeah, I, I love talking to educators um, 
about this stuff. I feel you know we've been working. I founded PTO Today 16 years ago. PTO Today is a national magazine and, and website and service provider for school PTOs and PTAs. Um, so it's it's been my work for now for gosh I guess 20 years. I started it even before that. Um, and we're talking to educators. I I, and I, I, I am a forger former educator, so I get it. When you're in the weeds teaching, it's, there's so many, there's papers to correct and classes to plan and curriculum and reviews with your principal. And the PTO and PTA stuff can sometimes take second shrift or get second shrift uh, or short shrift, I should say. Um, but it's so essential. I always, I always remind uh, educators that there's this army of really enthusiastic moms and dads that would love to help. And the schools that take advantage of that and put some organization around it and support the organization, they benefit so, so much. The research is 100% clear that parent involvement matters and that schools with higher parent engagement, no matter what the school's demographics are or the particular challenges are, if the parents are more engaged, the school does better. So it frustrates me when the schools don't embrace these willing volunteers and that's what PTO today is all about. We speak to those parents, those willing volunteers, about getting connected with their schools, about running a really effective parent group, about supporting the school and the teachers. Um, we've got expos around the country. We've got a, a great print magazine, a great website. And, and teacher list is an example. We've been, once we started PTO today, we kept finding more, finding more ways to sort of add some value at the intersection of parents and schools. And it's a place where not a lot of other folks are working, so it's been really neat to, um, to you know, that, like I said, there's so many important things in schools, and we're just focused on one of them, that intersection of parents and schools. So that's that's what we're doing. And thanks, Kim. And as you were talking, two questions came up: uh, Why should a teacher use teacher lists instead of just an Amazon wish list? Uh, a couple of reasons. If you um, if you post, and we obviously Amazon is a, is a, a partner of ours. If you post your list only on Amazon wish list, it's only going. You know, then you the list does not become what I you know ubiquitous. I say um, it's not mm -hmm. digitized for use in multiple formats. If you post a list on teacher lists, then the parent who does, doesn't prefer to shop on Amazon can access the list on her smartphone on teacherlist.com. Um, the parent who knows about TeacherList, they know that I can just go to TeacherList.com and find any list. The Amazon lists are great when they're posted there directly, but they aren't shareable. They don't live in other places. Um, right now, if you put your list on TeacherList, it, it appears automatically on Amazon and on Family Dollar. Soon enough, it'll be on multiple retailers automatically, and it saves you work. So we're more of a generic school-side list platform where Amazon is Amazon only. We like to think the flexibility that Teacher List provides benefits your parents. Okay. Uh, how about posting the link to Teacher Lists on a teacher's Google Classroom page? Absolutely. Uh, we every every list that's posted, if you're, the administrator gets uh, a couple other links on their list, they'll they'll see things like grab a link, and that'll grab a custom link that you can post anywhere you want. We have a lot of teachers posting on their Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's Google Classrooms or you know they might be using um, uh, Blackboard or, or one of the other major um, LMS or CMS solutions, um, our links go directly in there. And wh wherever parents are, there really should be a link because it, it's just helping parents get what they need. Mm -hmm. Can teacher lists be used in any country or just the U.S.? Yeah, I. I I thought of that. right now we're U.S. Somebody only. Somebody would um, ask that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right now we're. I, I do believe I, I'm not. I'm not going to put it in pen today, but I. Mm -hmm. I say in dark pen. In dark pencil, uh, will mm -hmm. be international for next back to school. Oh, okay. The, the, not the, yet, the, I don't. And that may that may not include multiple languages, but there's even some issues right now with zip codes in our back end database only including U.S. schools. So mm -hmm. right. So right now we're U.S. only. I think next year will be international. Mm -hmm. uh, can you remind the group, especially those that came in late, about how to sign up? Yeah, really simple. Um, there, there really isn't even sign up necessary. It's really an open platform. 
But to mm -hmm. get your list in the system on, on Teach List, there's a button on the home page that says Post Your Lists. And it's mm -hmm. simply a matter, it's almost like adding your picture to a Facebook uh, account. You go mm -hmm. in, you find your Word doc, wherever it may live on your computer, and you post it to our interface. And within 24 hours, we'll have your list digitized and translate it into the Teacher List platform. We'll send you a note when it's done. Hmm. Wow. That is, that is pretty quick and convenient. Yeah. Does anyone have any other questions for, for Tim? Yeah. Actually, he already answered that one, Eileen. The lists can be updated very quickly, actually. Yeah, they're, and they're right? completely editable. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add a little bit there. They're completely editable. Every field, every, you know, the year, what's, what's on them, your notes. That's all. We don't control that at all. That's all what you do. And once we digitize your list, you'll be the owner of that list, and you can then go in and change it as often as you like or as infrequently as you like. Um, that it's totally your platform once the list is in. And can one teacher in a school post a list, or does it have to be school-wide? It, it certainly can be one at a time. Um, mm -hmm. It's usually easier for parents when the school makes it their, their, right. their system for the whole school. But we have mm -hmm. tons of individual teachers that have posted a list, and, and often that's almost the gateway. One teacher does it, she likes it, and then says, why aren't we doing this through the whole school? Mm -hmm. um, so both work. It's also possible to have one admin who manages the list for the whole school. Um, so the, often that's a school office, maybe the secretary or the school office manager, um, mm -hmm. who is posting lists and editing and updating the year, um, just like she might do getting the, school, the list on the school website right now. She, becomes, she has the same right. function with teacher list. And could a teacher post a class wish list only? Yes, absolutely. Do you have to ask for a specific brand with teacher lists? Like Never. Like Kleenex instead of tissues? Nope. Yeah, it's fine. We, we get that. That's a very fair question because you saw the brands in the presentation. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in, in, so right now I'll give you an example. Um, uh, what's, what's a good example? Hefty is one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, Teacher, we, we love it when teachers choose Hefty because we think Hefty is a great brand and they're, and they're helping support the site. But mm -hmm. you, could, you could type in Ziploc. You could type in no brand. Mm -hmm. um, it's totally up to the teacher. We, don't, we, don't, uh, we certainly have some ways to encourage, but we never require and we never take brands off. If you prefer a brand, you can list it. If you don't prefer a brand, that's fine too. Great. Any other questions for Tim? So I think we'll head to the closing. That Peggy's going to take over. Thank you so much, Tim. Very exciting new tool. And, and uh, coming out, or at least learning about it at the start of the school year is very helpful. I know some people have already begun their school years and have already distributed those lists. But I really think that once you get it set up and running, it's going to be so helpful to have it ongoing throughout the year, because we often have to replenish supplies. and People may not be able to get them at the beginning of the year. So what a great service. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And we are just getting back in the swing of things with Classroom 2.0 Live. And so we're still working on finalizing some of our upcoming shows for the month of August. But we're looking forward to hearing from our very own Paula Noggle next week. And she's got some great things to share with uh, us about Google Apps, Google Tips and Tricks, and very specifically about Google Search and Google Extensions and some of the great ways she is using them. So I'm really looking forward to that. So we're back. We hope that you'll come and join us every Saturday and uh, learn great things from amazing educators.
The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest endeavor. He's gathered together all of his PD resources in one place, including the Host Your Own Webinar series. You can host a Blackboard Collaborate classroom for your own group as long as you make the, the session public. It's free. You can nominate a featured teacher uh, by filling out the form that is at this link that's on the slide, or the, the link is also in the, the uh, live binder each month. If you are teaching in a classroom, you can also nominate yourself for the monthly featured teacher. As you exit the session, you, your browser should open the Classroom 2.0 Live survey. Here's the link for the survey. You can also take the link from the chat, either the chat box or the log. It's also in the live binder. Uh, it's in the resources tab, which would be the second group of tabs. Uh, the surveys there, um, the featured teacher form is there. So those are all available. When you go to the survey link at the bottom, you'll find fields for your name, which will print out on the certificate. This is for the PD certificate, the professional development certificate, and also a, an email address. Please make the email address for this a personal one. Otherwise, a school may block this email from getting to you. That's common. The video collection and audio collection is on iTunes U for both sets of recordings. You can also get to the recordings in the RSS feed, which is on the website. So there are many different ways besides the full recording from the Collaborate session. That includes the entire session. There are different ways to get to past archives. Special thanks again to Tim Sullivan for presenting today, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in today's show. Thank you so much. <laughs>